Hey, horror fans, once again, it is me, the Horror Mizamani G. It's time to review another supernatural horror film. It's time to review the film, horror film called Deep Hatred. Yes. <laughs> now, Deep Hatred is a 2022 supernatural horror film. It was directed by Daniela Carbonajo and El Mechado. It was written by Fernando Alonso and also written by Hill McDowell. Now, the film stars Sarah Dunce, Jeremy Sless, Evan Hudson, and Marcella Marquise. Now, in this film, Cindy returns to her family's home after the death of her father to settle some disputes. Seeking comfort, she is joined by her boyfriends and friends. However, she soon discovers that the house hides a terrible secret. Oh, no. Now, you know, guys, I think I can write a decent supernatural film that has the same type of setup this film has. You know, you take a group of attractive young people, you send them off on an isolated but beautiful location. One person of the group has some unresolved issues they need to sort out. And then you add your typical ghost or evil spirit and the insanity commence. See, that's easy. <laughs> Now, so long as I have a decent script, some capable actors, and a pretty good director, I'm sure I can pull off the same setup and have a good supernatural horror film. And we, we've seen this before, all the setup, similar setups as this one I'm referring to. And, you know, you have all the elements in. You know, you have a pretty good director, you have a decent amount of script, you have some good acting, some nice suspense and tension, and some good practical effects. You can have a decent supernatural horror film. And I'm sure that's what so-called directors Daniela Carnavo and El McHaddo thought they had with their supernatural horror film called Deep Hatred. Now, it's set in an isolated but beautiful home estate. We have Cindy, along with her boyfriend Nathan, her childhood friend Mark, and his girlfriend Jennifer. They come to help Cindy settle some affairs at her family's uh, home after the death of her father. Now, after they all settle in, it doesn't take long for the weird shit to start happening, and the two couples have to find out what secret Cindy's father kept in order to save their lives. See? Simple setup. Pretty easy, huh? <laughs> now, as I stated earlier, this is a simple setup that we all seen before, and both Daniela and Al seem to have that part down. We see that Cindy has some issues that she needs to resolve regarding her father, and her boyfriend Nathan has something special planned as well. You know, something to build character development on, make the audience care about what's happening with Cindy, and, you know, Nathan has something planned. And, of course, we have the typical uh, character cliches that we have with Mark and his girlfriend Jennifer. But, you know, we've seen this all before, you know, pretty good, right? And at least the film looks very good. You know, we have some decent drone shots of the house and the surrounding areas creating this isolation you need in a film like this. You know, you have really beautiful uh, drone shots to show how peaceful and lovely the house is, but also showing that there's nothing around. We might have some other couple houses around in the area, like this nice little church that we have. Uh, we have a couple house where the neighbors live in it, but pretty much it's isolated, so you know you're not going to have enough when you even get away. However, despite the decent setup and how great the house looks, the film lacks the suspense and tension you need in order to keep the audience's attention. I mean, you do want the audience to feel that something dangerous is out there, and I feel I didn't really feel anything at all for the characters in this film at all. What's sad is that it doesn't help that the characters are as bland as ever, and there is no character development, nothing that you would make the audience pull for them for them to survive. The main problem with the film is that the actors are just flat in their performance as they do nothing to bring anything or bring any type of life to make the audience care about them. I mean, Sarah Dunst, who plays Cindy, is supposed to be the lead actress in this film. I guess you're supposed to care about her because of the unresolved issues that she had for her father. And But she can't do anything. And I don't know if it's her or the script or it could be both. I mean, even the other actors and actors in this film, they really don't do anything enough to, to make the audience care about them. They're just there just to read lines and do their cliched moments in the film. I mean, nothing in this film helps elevate anything at all. It's just dull and boring. I mean, even the so-called evil spirit, if you want to call it evil spirit, is nothing more than a bad-looking, sack-wearing Jason Voorhees who doesn't bring any type of 
fear or danger at all. Now, I don't know if it's because of the budget that they have or whether they spent the budget on, but they certainly didn't spend it on practical effects <laughs> at all. If you want to say there's anything practical about this guy, but it's just dull and boring and ugh, that's what you're going to call it? Uh, come on, even, uh, even some of my uh, nieces and nephews' children would be afraid of this guy. I mean, it's just boring. I mean, he's even worse than the sackhead um, Scarecrow from Batman Begins. He was more frightening than this guy. I mean, even not even the salt called twist at the end of the movie couldn't save this film. It's just flat. It's dull. It's boring. I mean, it's not a bad film. It's just dull and boring. That's what it is. So I'm going to give Deep Hatred only one. Of my five bloody gold coins, only one out of my five bloody gold coins. I mean, nothing really happens in this film. It's actually it's paced very well, so I really have to give the director's credit. It's paced very well. Uh, the runtime, I believe, is no more than like around ninety something minutes all, and so but it actually goes at a nice pace. So it's not like we're in, it's not we don't have any lows in the film. So I will give them credit for that. It's nicely shot. We got some good production values. But unfortunately, the acting is bland and boring. The movie has no suspense, has no tension. There's no atmosphere. There's no tone. It's just flat, dull, and boring. And so there you have it. That is my review of Deep Paper. Hope you guys did like it. If you did, please hit like and share because it does help out with the YouTube algorithm. And if you have seen Deep Paper, what do you thought about it? Please leave your comments in the comment section below and tell me what you thought about the film. Also, if you're new here, please hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. That way you'll be notified anytime when I put up new videos such as this one. Once again, my name is Lamont Smith, better known as the Horror Miser Money G. And always remember that horror rule. <laughs> and I'll see you in my next video. I'm out.